I, I, I wish they changed the voice that Zoom uses for that. It sounds really bad, but anyway. Um, so today we've got a few um, uh, upcoming PTOs in the calendar. Um, people just keep an eye on that. Uh, it's worth mentioning that uh, Steve will be out for, we decided it ended up only being like four days, but you know, it looks like more just because of the, uh, because of uh, spanning over a weekend, I guess. So um, keep that in mind. I'm going to be out for a few days uh, this week. Um, uh, and I mean, it's all in my calendar. You should be able to see it, but if you, if you can't, it's not a big deal. Um, uh, and then uh, later in October, I have a couple of days and we'll be out as well. Uh, and then Steve rightly mentions, I think that's Thanksgiving in America, right? Yeah. Um, uh, so if anyone else has days where they're going to be out, uh, throw them in the calendar, uh, excuse me, throw them in this document. Uh, and then so that we can all, uh, we can all sort of keep an eye on that. And that I think should be helpful for everyone. Um, so Gigi has the first items here. So I'm going to read out Gigi's items. Um, uh, Gigi mentions trying to improve our use of overcommit and possibly make it a standard at GitLab. Um, I think, was this the tool for doing? Yeah, okay. So um, we should take a look at this offline probably. Um, but uh, yeah, Steve, maybe Steve, take a look at that today if you have a minute um, and see what you think. And uh, front end engineers as well, maybe. And I'll, I'll read through it as well. See how we can sort of help that <laughs> effort along. <coughs> also, I still have my cold and I apparently have got everyone on the sick, the team sick virtually. <laughs> Sorry, Ian and everyone else for virtual cold, question mark. Um, anyway, uh, uh, productivity tip. Um, I think it says noisily can generate white noise with sounds like rain, cafes, trains, fire, etc. There's something about the sound of rain that really calms me and helps me tune better into work. I guess attached to my, oh, well, I guess I can't play outside anyway. Childhood memories. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Um, yeah, so if peeps like background noises, um, that might be a thing to take a look at. Um, I, I totally have those childhood memories as well. <laughs> uh, and then the other one, the next one is from me. So I will, you'll love this, Tim. Are you ready? What am I about to say? I'm totally going to share my screen. <laughs> um, let me just pull up the right screen here. Uh, share. Okay. Everyone should see. Wait. It's being super weird. Can you all see the quality dashboard? Thumbs up. Sorry, try that again. Sorry. Yeah, cool. All right. So this is our quality dashboard. Um, so one of our, one of our, there's two OKRs we're trying to really focus on. One is hiring, um, which we've been doing a pretty good job of so far. And the other is um, uh, throughput. Now that's going to be adjusted. So don't, <coughs> as we're adjusting that uh, towards more focus on prioritizing security and availability. Uh, throughput metrics haven't been changed as part of our OKR, but there's some effort to sort of work out how we do that, whether that's some percentage of, of um, availability slash um, uh, security issues that, or MRs that we end up pushing. Whilst that's in process, we're still gonna use the quality dashboard to just get an overview of what's going on. Right now, um, <clears throat> usually my percentages of bugs are usually up in the 90s. So this 88 means that I have some work to do um, to go and prioritize some of our, our bugs. Um, that bug uh, prioritization process is sort of going and reading the issue and looking at where it's at um, and determining whether it's a P4 through P1 uh, and the severity is a S4 through S1. Um, if people would find it useful, um, I can add a link or I think Tim, if you know where that is, do you want to throw that in the document, uh, the link to what the description of those are so people who are new can check them out. Um, uh, so uh, this dashboard, they all of these things for people that haven't seen it is uh, they link to a CSV that you can download and mess with a little bit more if the what you're seeing here aren't uh, super helpful. Um, 
So you can actually look at, uh, we sort of had a good, we had a good month here. Um, had a good month in 12.2 um, and then we dropped off 12.3 and 12.4 we're still in the middle of. So I'm expecting this number to come up a little bit, but we should always be trying to work forward and, and, and sort of increase as much as we can. Again, taking it as read that some of those metrics might change. Um, regressions per milestone. Um, we only had one in 12, uh, which is good so far. So we, I think we're doing a good job on that front. Um, this is a, 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 a this is sort of useful, I think, for people to be aware of. This is right now, I'm, I'm working with some other tools in the background that I'm using to do some different visualizations for some of the bugs and work that we're, we're, we're getting through. Uh, so um, those things I'll, everyone should have. <laughs> access to I'm a strong believer that everyone on the team should see whatever I'm using to determine how things are going everyone should be able to see that so um, I'm not actually actively using those right now I'm just trying to make them uh, effective um, weekly throughput uh, <coughs> I think weekly throughput is one of those things that you'll definitely see a lot of variance in and so I'm not super worried I, we generally want to think about our throughput in terms of our averages not in terms of our like specifics and that's why it's it's part of our um, direction to sort of look at not look at specific people and call out the number of MRs they've completed in a certain time frame because it kind of defeats the purpose we're really looking at overall throughput on average so it's a little weird when there's only two or three people in the team who are um, this is you know if it, when the team's small it's a lot easier to attribute whatever that average is to someone in particular as the team grows it's a little bit more uh, the lines smoothed out a little, but you can see, um, you know, set 16th of September worked out pretty nice. Uh, and then the 23rd of September week, we, we had a bit of a, a low month, a low week. Um, but this is all a function of how long it takes to complete work. So I don't think this gives a super clear picture. And um, when we look at the actual monthly throughput, these don't, I believe, I think, I believe these are split across, um, our, um, milestones so again this is like something that we can iterate on but um looking through this stuff we can sort of see september has been pretty good so it was a pretty good month for everyone which makes total sense because then Gigi's getting up to speed um and steve's uh working working nicely and and uh making good progress there um so when you're all thinking about how we're performing and and you know, how's the thing going? This is the dashboard that the organization uses. So this is worth checking out. Um, as you probably might've noticed at the very top, we're actually gonna start using um, Periscope. Um, <coughs> I, tr I, I don't think we're actually switched to that right now, but um, these are all sort of metrics that we should be thinking about um, in terms of those sorts of things. Um, this is where some of the drive comes from with the cum cumulative bugs of, uh, by priority. Um, we have currently about 50 open bugs. Um, priority, the orange is, is the P2. Uh, luckily, we don't have any P1s right now. Um, but you can see that over time, we've sort of been just picking up, up these bugs. So this is why I've sort of mentioned a few times that I want to start. Um, we're going to start sort of addressing these a bit more. But the small team, it's kind of tough too because... <laughs> You've got to decide whether bugs or features and some of these bugs we have are pretty old. So um, Tim and I have both sort of been following up um, uh, with some of those older bugs to determine whether those people, are, they still experience them and they weren't fixed in a more recent version. There's a little bit of triage that needs to be done there. Um, yeah, so these are the, this is, this is kind of our quality dashboard. Does any, anyone have any questions about it? You, meant, you mentioned that um, this is how the organization lo looks and measures of success. How often do they, are they referencing this? Is this like an everyday thing? Is it an end of milestone thing? So the OKR is defined around uh, 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 MRs per engineer per month or per milestone, depending on who you, you talk with. But it's, it's, it's more generally termed as throughput. Um, so our, our throughput um, for a particular month is really what it's looking at per engineer. Um, but that's, like I said, it's all average. So, um, sorry about that. Welcome to downtown San Diego. It's <laughs> nice and loud. <laughs> um, it's great when that happens at 2 a.m. It's awesome. Anyway, um, so 
the uh, so this is really a monthly check um, and it's averaged over um, members of the team. So the thing the thing here to look at is um, again we're not. I have a report that I'm working with to try and figure out if it's useful to have people see how many MRs they've merged. So you could look at it yourself. Um, that makes sense to me, but I think it's important not to be like, oh, you did seven and not six, and not eight. So there's a problem because that's not really what it is anyway. So it's more like, okay, how are we, are we being effective on average over time? Is that something we can help move in the right direction? Is there some reason why we are not increasing or some reason why we decrease? Can we resolve that and help people be more productive? So um, it's more, it's a month to month thing, um, but it isn't a specific calling out particular people as not having delivered at something. Um, does that, does that answer your question, Tim? I think so. And I, just a follow up question would be like, let's say I close a bug because the user hasn't responded to it. It's two or three years old and I close it, but we don't, resolve anything does that will that show as a closed bug on this report yep okay yep uh, i mean it's it so the the difference with the throughput metric is really around um actual mrs it's nothing to do with issues i mean in as much as mrs are totally dependent on issues but like it's not to do with those um uh when it comes to bugs um those are 100 percent related to issues so any of these reports you see around um Excuse me. Yeah. So as you see these, this is counting the issues that are tagged with the bug label. Um, I'm gonna. Can I stop sharing my screen, peeps? Because I'm not a. I'm not a huge fan. I know. <laughs> Some people are. So thanks. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's that's kind of uh, that is related to the issue that is open with a bug tag. Does that make sense to peeps? Sorry. Did, did that answer your question, Tim? Yeah, that does. I, the reason I asked is because uh, originally uh, in Periscope, there's a quality dashboard as well. And I was noticing that I was closing a lot of bugs. Like I went through and closed maybe like 15 or 20 bugs that were older or that were resolved. And I didn't see it show up in the quality dashboard in Periscope. But it looks like when I look at that week of the 16th, that's when I did it. And you could see a lot of those, a lot of bugs closed during that time. So, yeah, that we did. <laughs> So they are making an effort to switch over to Periscope because, you know, rather than having multiple sources, it's better to use the, the single source of truth factor, right? Um, but I had heard a couple of weeks ago that there's actually some issues with the Periscope data that was perhaps related to this. So that might be why that's going on. So okay. as of now, my understanding is that we're still using those quality dashboards. So um, I believe we'll get more communication through uh, the usual channels to say when we ought to be switching and when everything's ready. But having said that, uh, I don't see why there's any, I, I shouldn't think there'd be any reason you wouldn't like create an issue and ask or just ask in the quality channel because there is a quality channel where you can ask and ping peeps in there to see if there's something going on or they might say, yeah, it's a thing. Or they might say, oh, we didn't know that and maybe create an issue from there. Okay. I have a bunch. When I did that, I said a bunch of, bugs to awaiting further demand because I haven't heard anything from them. So I, have, I feel like I have maybe 10 bugs that I can close. So once I do that, I'll see if it's reflected in the dashboard. And, and if not, then I'll, I'll raise an issue. Yeah, I would give it a, I'm not sure what the time is. I'm, I don't know if we're doing some sort of ETL process to pull those changes into Periscope. Um, so maybe give it a minute and see. I'm, I'm not sure if that's described on the, the linked page that we they mentioned. Um, the top of the quality dashboard, there's that little um, toast, I guess you call it. I don't know. It doesn't pop out and go away, so it's not really. It's just a call out there. Um, if you click that link, it's got a description there. It might have more info there about how what how long it takes for that data to end up in Periscope and be visualized. Um, the quality dashboard isn't instantaneous either, so um, it doesn't like pop up if you close a bug right away. So it, I think it's usually a day is my understanding of how long it takes to get into the, the quality dashboard that we're looking at. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Um, so I'm reviewing these. Um, I'm reviewing this quality dashboard, like it should be like weekly, uh, pretty much. Uh, and so if people are interested in sort of tagging along with that, um, you know, for, for the individual contributors, it's, it's really like, Oh, okay. Where are we at? Um, I, I don't see it influencing people's day to day as much as it is, as it is like, oh, okay, this is an expectation that's defined. Do I need to start thinking about like moving it up a little bit? 
but it's not uh, don't think about this like as i said earlier that you're being held for some you've got to make 10 um, a month otherwise there's problems it's really trying to drive forward our velocity and like i mentioned there's there's changes coming in around how we're prioritizing that work as everyone's heard multiple times so um really just sort of go maybe have a look at how the team's doing and and, and identify that the reality is is even though we focus on small mrs some mrs it just doesn't make sense to break things up so you're not going to be getting I mean, it'd be cool if everyone did. I'm not saying it's impossible, right? But like some some weeks, you're not going to be able to pump out like, you know, two MRs or whatever, two or three MRs, right? It just depends on the work you're doing. Maybe you're doing a bunch of research or the work you're going to be doing later in the month. So like that's why it's averaged over time and averaged across members of the team because it should give us a better view that's a little bit more realistic around the, the different types of work people end up doing. So um, <coughs> I'm trying to... <coughs> I'm trying not to be too like um, up myopic about that that stat and 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 too focused on oh I've got to do ten. Um, like I said, I have another report that, that we can look at. The API you can go hit the API and you'll see how many MRs you've got and all that sort of stuff. So like you can see all this data if you really want it for yourself. But um, that's kind of the overview of this. It is important. It's something we want to focus on, but it's a it's a sort of midterm to long game more than it is a oh boy you didn't do two or three this week, right? But if anyone has any questions, please ask. If you're concerned that this is too much focus on the details, uh, I can understand that perspective, and um, that's why I'm being caught careful to sort of identify that this is more of a like oh okay let's try and bring that average up over time. Make sense? Cool. Uh, over to Nico. Oh, okay, so um, I listed as a point a uh, refactor update uh, register contain API for uniform use from project and groups. So what's happened is that I'm, I'm working on this feature to bring a container registry on the groups and uh, I bet the feature was working uh, backend and front end maintainer pointed out several um, several parts of the code where it could be written better, it could be more uniform. And by answering those comments, it looked like uh, is necessary maybe uh, to actually like have them talk you know, consistently because now on project we are eating a JSON file output not a JSON file a container yeah sorry a controller <laughs> a controller to fetch some data and then the API to fetch some other data on the groups is all from the API I can't move everything to the API because the API is not returning all the data that the UI needs so at the moment I brought it to like I think what I hope is a reasonable compromise to not make the mark too big. Uh, but I think we should think about um, having like a uni uniform layer to fetch this kind of data. Can you link to the MR you're talking about in the document, please, Nico? Sure. Uh, there you go. Just searching for the link. Thank you. Um, and so I can kind of comment on why this is like this. So this kind of goes along with um, initially controllers were used for internal front end endpoints and the API was meant to be external only. And then we recently decided that the API could also be used internally because why duplicate? Um, and so that's kind of why there's some mishmash between there's some stuff in controllers, there's some stuff in API, and it's not, not necessarily uh, fully uniform yet. But yeah, we should definitely work towards getting it to be in agreement with each other. So Steve, do you, do you, sorry, Nico, go ahead. Yeah, the, the point is that UI is exactly the same. It's the same set of data. So we, are, we uh, recycle completely the front end part minus the ability to delete on the group side, but the data is coming from two different parts and it makes the code a little bit inconsistent here and there. I was gonna say, uh, Steve, where did, I remember that discussion that we had around that. Um, where was that ended up, where did we end up deciding that? Was that on an MR that, I forget whether it was Nick or you that were working on it, or maybe you're working in combination. Um, was that discussion had at sort of the, this is an MR and you've got a maintainer discussing it or did it end up getting brought up in one of the other more broad situations with people? Because I feel like it's kind of a significant change. I 
personally don't remember. I don't think it was specifically an MR that I worked on. Do you remember, because weren't mm. you working on that, Nick? I've, I remember this happening. I remember us talking about, oh, we could probably just use the API, and then we started talking about it, and then it was resolved. But I'm just wondering if this is something we should communicate more broadly, because, you know, if people are in, in Nico's position, um, you know, understanding the context and then working forward, it's as like, hey, we now use the API. At my so I actually, sorry, I communicated with Nick about this and he actually explained to me uh, that the API was the right place to fix this. And it looked okay in the beginning, but then when it reached the maintainer, it turned out that the code is not as clean as it should be by having these differences of the data coming from left and right because I need to do some modification on the front end that they will prefer be on the back end, they're on the other way around. So I think the original discussion took place in the issue that Nico is working on. And I think Steve may have pointed out that this data was available via the API. And at that point, I don't think we on package really knew that the API was available for use on the front end. So I think at that point we were just assuming that the API was external only. Um, and then I sort of found out that other uh, teams are using the API and that it is encouraged. And so I think I went back onto the issue and made a comment saying, actually, we could use the API here. So this issue is no longer blocks. Um, and at that point I didn't sort of, I, I didn't spend time to scope out the API and whether or not it was suitable enough for this work. It was just like, actually this option is available to us. And on the surface, it looks like, yeah, we could go for it and, and just implement this. And now as it turns out during imp implementation, we've, we found some issues by the sounds of things. So um, yeah, we might need to come back and revisit this. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm, what I'm going to do is probably put this in our um, development staff meeting or at least send it, up uh, around the CICD section, just so that people can sort of have a think about this as a more general concept. Um, I personally am totally in the same page. It's like, if we already have this data access done through the API, then why not use it? Like it makes sense to me, but I think there might be some, I don't, I don't know how, how we're like addressing any sort of performance considerations around API scaling and stuff like that, depending on, on what's actually going on there. Um, so there might be some broader considerations if we all start, if, if everyone, all the front end engineers start hitting our API, is the API scaled up? I mean, it may just do it automatically, you know, hashtag <laughs> engineering stuff. Um, but like, uh, it's probably worth having a broader discussion about this idea. Um, and it may be that everyone else is already doing it and we just sort of learned it ourselves again, <laughs> which is totally possible. But um, yeah, cool. Thank you for that, Nick. I appreciate the context. And for that specific issue, um, you can certainly add a backend tag to it, and then we can, you know, make time for one of the backend engineers to to do the work for your specific issue to make it work. Or if you know there's no time for that, or and if the maintainer is open to it, you could open a second issue with a technical debt tag to revisit it at another time. Yeah, that that was uh, what I was planning to do, like to open an issue to move to that. Thank you. It seems like, <clears throat> and we, we. It seems like performance might be something we start to talk more about. I know we're talking about uh, improving the performance for the bulk delete API as well. So maybe there's like a, a broader thread of performance for our, our APIs for the container registry that we could revisit for performance related improvements in the future. <laughs> All right, so. I have the next one. I am just, I'll just, just a note. I'm still, still behind on 12.5 grooming. We're supposed to be, have that done and reviewed by the 13th, which is Saturday or Sunday. So I will try and catch up by Wednesday and uh, maybe we could review some things, re review the milestone and what's in there. And then we could start doing waiting. And then the idea would be by Friday or even by Monday to get the deliverable tags in for what's accepted. And then for next week, uh, I'll, I'll create the, the kickoff video and update the kickoff doc and make sure all that stuff is updated. So I apologize for this milestone I mentioned on Friday, the, the context switching pain, but I think that's, I've gotten over that now. I spent a lot of time this weekend 
putting myself into that mindset. So hopefully I'll, I'll catch up real soon and this will never happen again, you know? <laughs> but thank you for your patience. Wait, one of the best things about you is that you're human, Tim. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> well, so I guess it's true. Yeah, it's, it happens. Is there anything that I could do to help with the grooming for 12.5 or with the, any of the other prep that you're doing? I think once I feel like I have some issues in the milestone that are ready for review, I probably will ping people individually and just say like, can I talk about this issue? Does this make sense? Or is this going in the right direction? And um, it'll probably depend on what the issue is and who I talk to. Like, so, um, and then we'll do a broader review. So I, I think just hang tight. And then when I'm ready for some help, I'll, I'll ask for it. Okay. Uh, cool. Um, does anyone have anything else? We're kind of over time a little bit here, but uh, just to double check that people are happy ish. I mean, sort of Monday for most of us, um, <laughs> depending on when people are watching the video, uh, it might be a Monday still for them as well. So, um, if anyone needs anything, obviously, uh, uh, package channel, uh, and I'm going to add the thing to, um, uh, try to resolve I'm gonna to try to resolve the live streaming issue and then also add some conversation points around the um, using the API from the front end so that's the other action item I have here so otherwise I hope everyone has a lovely rest of their day um, whatever that ends up being for everyone depending on where you are in the world and uh, bye <laughs>